Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much. I hope it's a case of saving the best wine till last. Um, I'm Nuala Harding from Athlone IT. I'm Deirdre McClay from Letterkenny IT. Gina Noonan, IT Carla. Moira McGuire from Dock IT. And our colleague Helen Murphy from Waterford IT has a good excuse for not being here. She's on her way to pick up her PhD parchment in, uh, parchment in UCC. Oh, really? So, uh, just in terms of our presentation, just to give you a brief overview of what we're going to look at. So, as outlined in, in the requirements, uh, we're going to just give a brief rationale, um, look at the, how we're aligning to the PDF, their, our consultation strategy, student perspective, impact on sustainability, and throughout we will address uh, comments from the, from the panel from our previous uh, presentation. So, just to remind you, if you have forgotten, um, our core partners, are, are indicated here as um, Athlone is still at the centre of everything and uh, we have supporting partners in IADT, GMIT and Sligo IT who are bringing particular specialisms to the project. Uh, so again here are our partners and just to be clear on this uh, all of our partners, uh, the core partners, have uh, modules or have programmes uh, that are well established, that go through a uh, QA processes already. They can range from individual modules uh, of 5, 10, 15 credits. There may be programmes embedded within them in terms of certificates, special purpose awards, etc. We've had 840 graduates so far from across the, the core partners, and uh, last year we had up until Christmas 220 uh, students who are current. So uh, the programmes are, are devised specifically for the IoT context. They're agile in the sense that we add modules or special purpose awards uh, as, as are required. And again, just to note, we had identified our key stakeholders initially. Um, and so we see this as kind of a two, a two, a two aspects to this. Uh, some consultation with management, etc., is around awareness raising uh, and talking, as we've just mentioned, about you know, what the PDF means. Uh, and then the other side is obviously in terms of the, the mapping work that we are doing and ensuring that that's being done correctly. So I'll hand over to my colleague. So in relation to our original rationale, we're interpreting the framework across the IoT sector, focus, focusing on needs and based on a reflective and evidence-based approach. In relation to the typologies, we're very much focusing on the accredited typology, but we have a belief too that the accredited space provides for an opportunity for all other three as well. These are the key objectives then of ATLAS and it's about interpreting and map mapping the existing provision, exploring RPL, and identifying opportunities to align to digital capacity. This was the feedback then from the, the review panel in 2016, and it was very largely positive feedback, but a number of things we knew we needed to address, and we believe we have addressed them uh, as such uh, at this point, are that we needed a, a clearer process uh, and outcomes, uh, a focus on pedagogy and forming development of a shared vision, a clearer uh, evaluation strategy, and also more consideration of impact and consultation. And these are things throughout the presentation that we'll em emphasise. Uh, as to our targets then from phase one, January to June, uh, project setup and planning and mapping and consultation, uh, we have achieved all that we set out to achieve between January and June so far. Also regarding ongoing process, we have clear processes and outcomes, in particular with regular meetings on Skype and face-to-face, -face. Uh, and I suppose we have the particular challenge because of the, the size of our group. We have clear action points and we have recurring uh, agenda items. There's also a clear and transparent process all the way through and access to documentation, so all partners use Google Drive to share and edit documents, and also all partners and their supporting institutions uh, will use the National Forum collaboration space and we make large use too of Skype and video. So now I'll hand over to Gina to talk to you about alignment. Thanks very much, Deirdre. So I suppose one of the key features of what we're doing is aligning to the professional development framework and what we started with is a very much a programmatic, holistic approach. Um, as far as the core team is concerned, we want to look at philosophies, the themes underpinning all our existing programmes, the programme learning outcomes as well as module learning outcomes, and the learning and teaching and assessment strategies, as well as bringing in the learner experience through kind of maybe um, documentation that wasn't captured 
by some of these um, elements. So the Lin values is what we were, our modules are based on. These were established in 2010. That's the Learning Innovation Network. So they already align. So we're very much a value-led pedagogy that we're adopting. So um, we can see there that they align very well towards the professional development framework. We looked at all of our programmes across the sector and we established, first of all, what are the key features of our programmes before ever we aligned. And these were some of the ones that came out, uh, particularly in terms of authentic assessment, formative assessment, reflective practice, um, and also the themes that were developed to suit the 21st century higher education. Um, more key features that came out again across all of our programmes across the sector included kind of collaborative learning environment which we had established, the scholarship of teaching and learning, personal development and technology which we saw very much as being not just a kind of an add-on but was very much embedded in our teaching and learning strategies um, and the way in which we approach the learning and the content and uh, the assessment procedure. Um, I suppose a lot of modules start with kind of teaching philosophies. We started with a philosophy statement. So we looked at the philosophy statements of all our modules and all our programmes. And we depicted it by looking at the number of occurrences of the, the various words in all of our philosophy statements. And what was interesting here was that the word teaching, even though it's there, it didn't come to the fore. Okay? Learning came to the fore. And we really believe that our shared vision is that in order to teach, we have to learn. Okay? So I'll pass you to Nuala to show you how we did this. Thanks very much. So we have obviously agreed to um, set up uh, our mapping tool. And again, this is something that we wanted to remain quite simple, but uh, intuitive, but also something that each of the partners could use and uh, use collaboratively. So um, in order to do this, we devised an Excel uh, tool which was based on a, a tool that was devised by our engineering uh, faculty in AIT uh, in order to show their mapping to their professional body for accreditation. So we've got two levels. So uh, we, we're looking at programme level mapping to the PDF the domains and the elements, and then module level mapping. And underpinning that are, is all the data in relation to the supporting data. So the philosophy statements, uh, or the philosophy programme philosophies, and again, the programme learning outcomes themselves, the module learning outcomes, uh, our learning and teaching and assessment strategies, and the domains themselves. So just to give you an image of these, and we'll have a look at the Excel in a second, this is ju these are just two exemplars. Uh, at the moment, we have a master document with all the institute information from each of the institutes in, uh, 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 devised. We also then see that um, being split in for each institute so that each institute can indicate how their, their programme at programme and module level is, is, is aligning to the, to the, um, to the framework. And so at programme level and at module level. And I think it's interesting, uh, we've, you will be able to see how we've done that. So we, we've indicated a narrative for, um, for what we mean by alignment. So here you'll see, this is the interactive document. So on the left hand side, an institute will indicate, first of all, their programme learning outcomes. Um, we are asking people to consider how these align then to the, uh, the elements by indicating whether it, it's very evident, the alignment is very evident from the philosophy, from the underpinning values of each programme, the learning outcomes, etc. And then we move down to some and, and down to none for, for each of them. When, the, when undertaking the, uh, the mapping, this is interactive, so it will link back to programme learning outcomes, and also it allows the user to um, access the domains so that they can keep checking when they're doing this, this, uh, this type of mapping. Uh, likewise, at module level, uh, the same ap applies. So at, on each sheet, we have indicated the link to the learning outcomes so people can check with those and then also check back to the domains to see how they link. Uh, we, we wanted this to be a, a holistic, this initial piece to be, you know, a, a holistic approach so that they're reading uh, uh, they're, and they're interpreting. And they're doing that as individuals initially so we're, we're each undertaking this at institute level, but the key thing is the discourse. We are then coming together to meet, to make sure that we're, having, we're, we're achieving a common inter interpretation of the domains and also of the, um, 
uh, of the elements within those domains and see if they meet. And if they don't, for example, we, we, would ex we expect and we have seen where we are seeing red or where we are seeing some. And as mentioned just a few minutes ago, we see that maybe those elements will be um, addressed by undertaking other professional development which is not linked to our specific programmes. So you can see across the, the base here, there are different, um, there are different uh, module lists. All the evidence is there. And also, we will have our current module listings for each of, of the institutes involved in the, in the, in the project. In terms of, uh, just to go back to our presentation. Sorry, I'm a Mac user, so this is a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I see it. I, I actually see it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so now we'll just move on to our evaluation consultations. So actually, we see this as being kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, we don't want our evaluation to be a bolt-on exercise. We want it to be something that's happening as we're going through. So again, just to remind you, this is our phase two work. Uh, we've noted in red uh, at the end, this is a kind of an additional piece which has again come through from our work uh, where we have developed a series as, um, of outputs to trial at workshops um, while mapping with graduates in each institute and I'll talk about that in a second. So in terms of evaluation strategy, we looked at this as the evaluation of the project and we started with a question around what will success look like for this uh, for our Atlas project? And in order to, again, because there's so many partners involved, in order to come up with a common consensus around that, we've used the um, what's known as the rough data framework, which gave us a practice-based approach and allowed us to engage in reflexive questioning around, you know, what is the reason for this? What uses? What what data and evidence will we collect, etc. And um, just to show you, this has had you know, a very positive impact in terms of the way we're working through this. So we've developed our mapping tool. We've already presented it to our steering group for feedback. It's been completed, so the first iteration has been done by each of the core team, and we're meeting again to discuss that, the findings of that this week. Uh, we've also um, undertaken the development of staff development workshops and resources, which we can use um, in, in quarter four. But we've also piloted those with current capstone module participants. So the capstone on the PG Dip in AIT, we've worked through these with them also, which again is, has been an interesting um, uh, endeavour. And you can see there, our plan is to work with graduates uh, in each of the institutes, core and partner institutes, uh, in terms of again uh, their perception of the mapping and 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 seeing if it, it links with with our findings. The other thing, which is very simple, but we intend to make the PDF explicit on all our staff development activities. So as you would with graduate attributes, to identify an element just before a training session or a workshop starts. So that staff, are, it's, it's becoming just part of the culture of what we do in professional development. Very simple, but I think I, we're, we're seeing that even having an impact already because we've trialled it. Um, and then in relation to ongoing, our ongoing consultation will happen with programme teams, again, so that they are um, agreeing with, with, with the decisions we've been making, our institute committees, and also obviously with Lynn and Thea who are supporting us. So again, just an outline of the consultation strategy. Again, I'm not going to read it completely, but we can already see um, synergies even with, with the projects here today. And we've had discussions with some of them, and I see other um, potential opportunities from, from the presentations also. And so these are, obviously, we'll be focusing on phase two from, from September onwards. Um, just about the student perspective. Obviously, as is the case in the other programmes, our colleagues are our students and the key um, feedback from our current students, our graduates and also our prospective students is absolutely key and we're getting that consultation going on an ongoing basis. We're also using existent, existing evidence about the wider student body such as ISI, Lynn service, service within our own institution and we have a student union representative on our steering group as well. Just to talk you through where we are relative to the, uh, to the original submission, as Morag mentioned this morning, the development of the tool took time, a little more time than we expected, but we feel it was time very well spent. But more than that was the work and the time we spent on actually interpreting the professional development framework. 
and we found this was a very iterative process. We were continually going back and forth between us to develop a shared understanding. We're going to be doing it again, in fact, on Friday. So, in fact, while we all have mapped our own programmes, we couldn't show that to you today because we're the only ones who have done it. This is now going out to our team, uh, programme team colleagues within our own institutions. One of my colleagues is here, is, 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 um, is going to be involved in that very shortly. So, our programmes have wide ownership within our institutions. And if this is to be successful, everybody has to own the result. We need to, we, we know we need to get a consensus around how this is interpreted. So this has been ongoing. It's a very iterative process, and there are a lot of iterations we see to come. And where that came up very much for us was in the, I suppose, the difference between the explicit and implicit experiences. As we were all mapping ourselves, we were struck by how hard we found it sometimes to to see, is, is this evident in this module, for example, because not explicitly perhaps in a learning outcome or in programme content or in an assessment, but sometimes absolutely implicitly, particularly so in the communication skills and particularly so around the technology. So we've had a lot of discussion about how we deal with that. And interestingly, in the piloting with the AIT capstone um, group, this came up from them as well, the implicit versus the explicit. So the consultation has been more iterative than we expected. We also expect that the next work in phase two will be informed by the draft recognition framework, which is a wonderful opportunity for us uh, to explore it in our own context and to raise awareness of it locally. And the staff development workshops are uh, a new addition. Some of the feedback was around fleshing out what we're doing in terms of impact and sustainability. We've taken the, um, the impact framework and we've fleshed that out. I'm not going to bore you by going through it in detail. You can, you, you can see the idea here. First, I suppose the key things in terms of impact are the fact that we will have, we will have this um, framework aligned within eight of the uh, 14 IOTs. So this in itself is going to raise awareness hugely of the professional development framework. It's going to have it inform in our work. Um, as Nuala mentioned, it's embedded, it's embedded now through a lot of the other work that we do. And the other impacts will largely cascade from that. But also importantly for us too, we have all seen our programmes are long established, very successful programmes that are recognised as having had very positive impacts in our institutions. We have seen firsthand in very teaching intensive institutions the huge impact that accredited professional development can have. And the recognition of this is hugely important for us. So that is a hugely important impact from our point of view. Now, the third phase will be January to June 2008, which uh, sounds far away, but obviously isn't at all. We're going to be sharing the resources that we developed. We'll complete an overall evaluation, and we're going to start dissemination. We've identified conferences, and we're hopefully going to uh, publish a little. But also, the local dissemination is hugely important for us. Um, We've been students here, we've gone back to our feedback and we've tried to see if we've addressed the feedback. You'll be able to tell us whether we've been successful or not. And just finally, one thing we noted overall, there's a lot of different institutions involved in this. We were a bit anxious about were we bite enough more than we could chew, was it going to be too much? But actually the value of collaboration has been huge for us. We all had worked together and collaborated in ways before, but we really feel we're developing a community of practice now, a strong one around the accredited professional development. We've been able to sustain each other, and most of all, we're all still talking. <laughs>